Christian Rommel, Global Head of Oncology Discovery at Roche. The path from basic research and technology innovation to transformative cancer therapy. My interest in drug discovery in medicine started very early, as a young boy. And it was not without any peer pressure from my friends that wanted to become police officer, truck driver, making ice cream and so forth. But I hold on to it and led naturally that my first step was to study pharmacology in northeast Germany. And a wish remains a dream if you don't have a plan. And one thing I realized is, and advice given by others, go to great places because great places are built by great people. They have a history of success. There are a lot of investments available, technologies, often a very vibrant uh, environment. Mm -hmm. And I had the, the pleasure and really a, an abundance of opportunities when I started at the Max Planck Institute in Berlin, mm -hmm. and then had uh, two steps in my PhD, and I'll get back to this here in, in Zurich. And then I already changed course and uh, continued my career as a postdoc at biotech. And this was 97, and that was not a common thing to do, to do a postdoc in biotech. And back then, Regeneron was a very small biotech company, I think less than 200 people, and about $500 million market cap. And the last time I checked, I think there are now over 5,000 people, and their market cap is probably 100 times up. Then, so far cerebral, then there was a hormonal step in my career because I got back to Switzerland. I love Switzerland, and there was always somebody I loved in Switzerland. But it was a lucky move because the work I've been doing in, in Geneva for Merck Sorono helped me to set forth to be contacted by an, a, a, company that started, or a company that was about to start and says, would you come to the Wild West and do biotech with us? And my first response was, no, never. And then 24 hours later, I called and said, is this job still available? Because I experienced this little bit of startup biotech at Regeneron. And this was a happy end, the Intellikine startup company. And then I decided to go to Emgen or to Roche, because there you have access to significant resources, a lot of capabilities. And if you do this right, you can really make a big impact. Now you see this quote here, and I really sign up for that, uh, because no matter what you do, there is an element of timing and luck. Now, changing places is important because you explore different environments, you meet different culture of thinking science, you meet different leaders, you experience different successes and failures. But more important so is, maybe that is the journey of changing places, are people. The people that you meet and again, I'm very gifted to share with you today that I had an opportunity to work with great people. And I want to only refer to some of them. But it starts already where you are right now at the university, because I can only hope that you are being taught biology by very inspirational professors that get you the energy and, and the passion for what's ahead of you. Certainly, uh, Ernst Hafen was one of those. And I'm not just saying it because he sits in front of me. Ernst had a tremendous impact on my own life, because he was one of those teachers and mentors who has this vision, a very fun, vibrant laboratory environment. Today, I still think I manage people a little bit in memory and our joint and share time together. And Ernst was also the one who says, come on, go and do your career in biotech. That's where you should go. George Ancopoulos, I think, is one of the most inspirational R&D leaders of, of biotech in, in our times. And then Kevan Chalkart and Troy Wilson is, a, for instance, a combination of an academic rock star who finds an entrepreneurial CEO, gets some venture capitalist, and does an, a really an adventure and is very courage to build a biotech and so forth. So really think about how you could build a network, you know, use your social capital, please, because it's something as you go forward very, very important. Now, there's another um, uh, uh, something we all need if you go up for this journey, and this is family or partners. I could have not done my career life without a tremendous support from my wife and my family, because going around the globe is certainly something that can be a daunting task. The other thing, is, and you've heard already uh, earlier today, is when you dream and think about your career, really think big. Take something on that is an important problem and that you, where you can make an impact. And I think cancer 
is a big problem. At current rate, two out of three women and one out of three men will develop cancer throughout their lifetime. Or in other words, we will all become patients of this disease in one form or another. So I signed up for this uh, already when we did cancer signaling in Trosophila. So my entire career was dedicated to this problem. So why is cancer so difficult to treat? Why do we refer to it as the emperor of all maladies? And as you will learn, and you know this already, cancer is a devastating disease on one hand. On the other hand, one could almost say it's fascinating biology. It's driven by genetics, by mutations, many mutations. It's genetically unstable. It has many cells involved. It's almost an organism on its own, and it's a systemic disease. And that tells you that in order to succeed to develop therapies that make this impact on this aggressive complex disease, we have to follow the genetics, we have to treat in combination because there are so many components, and we have to engage with the entire organism, with the, the, the system of the patients, in order to eventually deliver therapy that can cure cancer. And we are not quite yet there, but a lot of progress has been made. And the reason why I show this to you is the understanding of orthogonal thinking and how you can tackle a big biology problem by combining technologies, translational thinking, and then, of course, the aspect of drug discovery. Historically, we started here and we considered cancer as one disease. Yeah? And we don't think like this, of course, anymore, because this goes back like more than 30 years ago. The first step was to understand molecular targets, and then there are genetic markers that actually predict that your medicine may not work. So from poisons like chemotherapy and radiation to the first molecular target therapies. But today we understand that cancer is driven even in a particular organ type like lung by many genetic drivers. Those drivers have now access to several therapies that have been taken and given in combinations. But now there is another, right now, a revolution or evolution of, of cancer therapies going on, and this is engaging with the patient's immune system to treat the disease. And the combination of all of this is very, very encouraging. But now what that is important for you is think out of the box, think orthogonal, think about sequencing, technology, think about engaging with this immune system rather than targeting the tumor directly, because once that comes together, you make that impact. <laughs> now, the other thing for everyone in the room is when, when I started my career in thinking about cancer, I have to say it's disappointing because I was thinking more inside the box. I was thinking more what other people told me, what other people do. You can do better and different than others, and maybe that had happened. But I wasn't thinking 20 years ago about adaptive T-cell therapies, to take the T-cell of a patient, take it out, manipulate it genetically, put it back in, and let the T-cell fight the tumor. That is out-of-the-box thinking. So again, think big, be creative, and, and, and have no fear for failure, please. Oncolytic viruses, for instance, cancer vaccines, and new ways. So today, we have a certain perspective of how are we going to treat cancer patients in 10 years from now that will be very challenged and looks different. And some of us may know already how that goes. The other thing is, and that's also a little bit messed up, but no worries about it, is you have to have a self-awareness of who you are and what you want to do, what excites you. If you're excited about a car that drives 100 miles per hour right now and you want to build a car that drives 400 miles per hour, that is fine. Maybe this is who you are and how you want to make an impact. And this is so-called the horizontal innovation. But maybe you're not excited about this because you may want to do something like, you know, the Tesla car or the Medic car, or you want to do something completely different. But then you need to have the courage, the commitment, you have no fear for failure again, and you're taking something on that hasn't been tried before. And clearly that has the highest impact on, on others, on society and yourself. I tend to think in my job in, in three dimensions, it's people, vision, and, and culture. And I'd like to leave with you today that if I could pick a few things, then again, courage and passion is ultimately what, what you need. Yeah? Don't take something on that you don't really feel excited and driven by. Embrace the opportunity in science to, to collaborate. Yeah, the magic is in between different technologies and different people, there you can uh, maybe uncover the news and the, the big next thing. 
And again, I mentioned to you a couple of times already, don't have fear for failure. Now, the other one is, and there's nothing wrong about having fun, and because this is often catalytic to what you want to do in, in life, of course, but stay focused, uh, and when you have found your place, be sincere and respectful, and then be impatient. So maybe you're young, you're wild, you have your dreams, so no one should tell you this is not going to work, because I told you 20 years ago, if somebody had told me we can take out the T-cell of a patient, expand in the lab to CRISPR, in these T cells, right, and manipulate them by synthetic biology, genome editing, and pink, put those T cells back to patients and see the best, potentially one of the best um, uh, impactful medicines for cancer patients. Many people have said back then this is not going to work. And finally, in finishing, I mentioned to you people like Ernst Hafen or George Jankopoulos, who had a strong impact on my life. I want to leave you with this quote because doing science, no matter whether you do it academically or you do it in a commercial setting or in a truck discovery setting is tough. You're tough too, but I'll, le I'll let, you, uh, let you read this. And again, thank the opportunity to share with you the, all the journeys that we all had, and hopefully it was some inspiration. <laughs> <laughs>